Last year, I made a mermaid stocking pattern and I shared that pattern with you on my website. This year, I wanted to make something to kind of complement it, so I made a shark stocking and I'm sharing that pattern on my website with you too. So the pattern is linked in the description. You can go check it out there. I also have all the supplies that you'll need linked in the description as well. And if you prefer written instructions, those are also on my website as well. So the first thing that you'll wanna do is you'll wanna pre-wash and iron your fabric. After your fabric is pre-washed and ironed, you're gonna wanna cut it out. So after you have everything cut, you should have two of the main body pieces, two of the dorsal fin pieces, and two of the small fin pieces. And then you should have one tab piece and one cuff piece. If you want to before you sew these to add a little bit more stability, you can use an interfacing. So I just cut an extra piece of the dorsal fin and the smaller fin. I'm just gonna add my interfacing to the wrong side of the fabric. You can use fusible interfacing or sewable interfacing. Either one will work just fine. If you do get fusible interfacing, make sure that it is machine safe so that you can sew through it. This is the interfacing that I'm using. It's called Craft Fuse by Pellon and it is a little bit more of a sturdy interfacing. This will just help the shark fin stick away from the shark body a little bit more. Totally optional, you do not have to do this step. Um, I do recommend it if you want the shark stocking to pop a little bit more. So since I'm using fusible, now that I've got that fused, I can just go ahead and add my right side to right side, pin it together and it's ready to sew like this. Now that you have everything cut out, what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and sew the fins. So you're gonna take your fin pieces, and I have mine already lined up. There's two layers here, so you're gonna do them right sides together, and then you'll wanna pin them down so that they don't um, move while you're sewing them and stuff like that. Once you have the fins pinned on the outsides, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around on the edge is here, and we are gonna sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. We're gonna leave this side open and not touch that, just sew around these edges. So I've got my sewing machine here. I'm just using a regular needle and nothing fancy or special because I'm just sewing with flannel today um, and my faux fur. So what you're gonna do is just take it in there. I'm using a stitch length of about 3.5. It's a little easier to unpick if <laughs> I make a mistake, but it'll still be sturdy enough to hold the stocking together really well. Start your seam and make sure you backstitch so that your seam doesn't come undone. And then we're just gonna sew all the way around. So when you're dealing with this fin part, you might need to lift your presser foot up a few different times to kind of readjust the fabric and to make sure that you're keeping that quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, and now I'm reaching the end of it again, so I'm gonna back stitch to hold my stitching in place. All right. Okay, so this is the first fin done. This is what you have after it's sewn, is all just around these edges here and leaving this side open. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the smaller fin, just the same way. And the smaller fin is actually gonna be just a touch more tricky to sew because um, it is smaller, which means you're dealing with a smaller thing and that's fine, just take it slow, take the time you need. There's no need to rush through this project. And again, you may need to readjust the presser foot to kind of help your fabric move the way it needs to. Just be really careful when you're doing that that you don't pull the fabric in the wrong direction. Now that your two fin pieces are sewn, what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim off the edges. So you're just going to, if you can find the point, you're gonna trim right next to the point and just take the top off. And then you're going to come back around and trim off all the extra threads. And you really wanna to try to reduce bulk up here by that point. So I'm just gonna trim off a little extra right next to the point so that when I turn it, it comes a little bit sharper instead of having too much bulk in there to turn. Okay, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing with this one, just trim off the end and then take off some of the bulk. Okay, now the fins are ready to turn. So what you're gonna do is just stick your hand in there and 
push it through on the back side and then pull it out. Okay, and then just push it through, wiggle it in. If you need to, you can find a pen or some other blunt object. I'm gonna use my scissors and I don't recommend that unless you feel comfortable with it. Just to kind of get that point all the way through. Okay, and then you'll do the same thing with the smaller fin. Now that these are both turned, we are going to iron them down so that they lay flat and don't bubble while we sew them onto the stocking body. Okay, well, I didn't turn on my iron beforehand, so whoops on me. And <laughs> while I'm waiting for that to heat up so I can iron those down, I'm just gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. I'm just gonna go ahead and sew my tab piece because that one's really simple and easy. So just take the tab piece and then you are gonna fold it in half with right sides together. And obviously with this, um, blue fabric it's going to be a little bit harder for you guys to tell which side is the right side and wrong side for my fabric but just know all the patterned or the pretty side or the pattern whatever you're using goes to the inside so you're seeing the ugly side or the unfinished side i'm pulling my sewing machine back out and this one is also a quarter inch seam allowance so just stick the tab in there at a quarter inch sewing don't forget to back stitch because that's gonna help secure your seam now I'm going to turn the tab right side out I like to use a turning tool for this uh, you could also just use a safety pin I've got one of those on here too in case I need it um, I've also seen people use chopsticks to turn their stuff to turn their tubes so you can use pretty much whatever you have so I'm just gonna stick it in here. The way that I use the, the loop turner is uh, just kind of stick it through your fabric like that till it hooks and then you just pull it all the way through. And pop it off and it is ready to be ironed too. Okay, so the way we iron this one, this one you want the seam on the back side so you just kind of wiggle your fabric until it gets there. And then you're gonna iron it flat like this so that the seam is totally on the back side. So I'm gonna pull out my stuff again to iron it. My iron's nice and ready now. And you just wanna make sure that your seams are all pressed out when you go in to, to iron them. That way you're not getting any weird bubbling or anything like that happening on your dorsal fin or your small fin either. Now that these are all ironed, they are ready to be sewn on. Um, we're gonna leave the tab piece off to the side for a little bit because we're not ready to deal with that one yet. But we're gonna take the shark stocking main body. So I've got my two pieces here that are ready to be sewn together, but before we can sew them together, we need to baste the fins on. Now, if you're not familiar with basting, basically what it is is just like a temporary stitching that holds something in place until you're ready for your final stitching. So. Using one of the main body pieces, what we're gonna do is we are going to baste the fins on. So just take one of your main body pieces and with the right side up, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your dorsal fin on the side that has two notches. You can see you can line up the notches right here and the notches right here. So put that there and make sure that the fin is pointing down. All fins need to point down or else they are not gonna lay right. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin these on. And then you're gonna do the same thing with the small fin. You're gonna line up that notch with this notch and fin pointing down. Always make sure the fins are pointing down. And then just clip it on. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna baste it on. 
The way that you baste is you put your sewing machine at the longest stitch length that it has and you don't back stitch or anything like that. You just run it through the machine, pull it out, and then it's done and ready for the next step. The highest stitch length I have on my sewing machine is a stitch length of five. So, and I'm just gonna go in with about a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm gonna baste it on. And remember, you don't need a back stitch with a basting stitch. And what this will do, this will basically just kind of keep the fins from moving while we're sewing the body pieces together. Because if the fins move, then they may not actually be sewn in the right spot. And so basting it just kind of ensures that it's going to stay where it needs to stay. All right, so I've got the dorsal fin basted on. And now I'm going to baste the small fin on. And just again, using a quarter inch seam allowance because then I don't have to worry about it in my bigger seam. And now that that part's done, you're gonna take your other main body piece of the shark stocking and you are gonna lay it with the right side down. So right sides are facing each other and you're gonna line up all those notches and the fin pieces and then you're gonna pin it together so that you can sew it. So the top we have not pinned because that part's not gonna be sewn. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and sew all the way around the rest of the edges with a half an inch seam allowance. Okay, and this one, remember, is a half an inch seam allowance. It's different than the rest of the ones we've done, which have been a quarter inch. And we're just gonna start at the top and now you'll want to make sure that you are back stitching when you are stitching because we're not basting anymore. When you get to the end here, just pick up your presser foot and turn your fabric and, and then continue to sew. All right, and don't forget to backstitch at the very end of the seam. Now I'm done with that part. I'm gonna take it out. All right, and now that the shark stocking is sewn all the way around the edges, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the fins. We are gonna go ahead and trim off the very tip of up to your seam, but don't cut through your stitches. If you cut through your stitches, you'll have a hole in your stocking and all your gifts will fall out. We don't want that. So go ahead and trim off the tips of them like that. If you have a fabric that's gonna fray, you're gonna wanna go around these edges and zigzag stitch again so that it doesn't fray since this isn't a lined pattern. Um, and then if you don't have a fabric that's gonna fray, so like most velvets probably won't fray, your flannel's probably gonna be fine. I'm not gonna go back over and zigzag stitch my flannel because I haven't had a problem with it unraveling on the stockings. So, but if you have a fabric that's going to unravel, please make sure you do that so that you don't end up with holes later. If you do have a fabric that's gonna fray and you zigzag stitch, after you're done, go back and trim the seam allowance down straight up to the zigzag line. If you don't have a fabric that's gonna fray, you're gonna go ahead into your fabric right now and you're gonna cut down all your seam allowance down to a quarter inch. This will help it not be so bulky when you turn it and it'll give you nicer corners and nicer roundings. So you just do it all the way around where you sewed. And if you want to remove that basting stitch, you can. I'm actually just kind of cutting it off, so it's not necessary that you pull it out. Okay, now you're gonna turn the stocking right side out and you just do that by reaching in, inside it. And I like to get right up to the corners and then just kind of shove the corners through into my hand and then pull that. And then I'll do that with the other corner as well. and then you pull it all the way through. Okay, and now like the dorsal fin, you're gonna wanna go in with some sort of blunt object, whether that be a pen or a chopstick or something else, and just 
put these corners out real good till they're like a really nice point. If you find that when you're turning the fin, you're not getting a sharp enough point, you can go back in and trim it down a little bit more at the seam allowance. But if you do that, just make sure you don't get too close to the stitching because it will create a hole later if you do get too close. Now that it's turned, I am going to iron it down so that it doesn't bubble and it keeps its shape a little bit nicer before I move on to the next step. My cuff piece is white, and so I'm gonna go ahead and change out the thread in my sewing machine to match the cuff um, while I'm waiting for my iron to heat up. So if you are using a different color cuff than you are the body, then you'll wanna make sure that you switch out the thread too. So the one thing in sewing that'll really make your stuff look awesome is if you don't skip the ironing. I know sometimes ironing can be a little bit of a pain, but it actually yields some of the best results and it makes it look so much more professional. So I would definitely not skip the ironing. Now the main stocking body is done and now we're gonna move on to the cuff. So we're gonna set this aside and you're gonna take the cuff piece and you're just gonna keep it folded in half. And we're just gonna sew down this edge. So I like to pin it, especially faux fur has a tendency to be really slippery. So pinning it in place or clipping it in place is gonna be really beneficial and helpful. You could also use a fleece for the cuff or um, even just a flannel, something to match the body would be just fine. I just like the look of faux fur, so that's what I'm using. All right, so the seam allowance for this one is also a half an inch. So we're just gonna go in and sew it down with a half an inch. Okay, so we've got this edge sewn, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this in half so that we are making a tube, and we are putting the right side out. Okay, and now what you wanna do, now that it's a tube, you're gonna find quarter points on this, and so basically we're just dividing it into fourths. So I am starting with the seam, and now I'm gonna find the point directly opposite of the seam by putting it flat like this, now I found the opposite side. I'm gonna mark that, and now I'm gonna put those two sides together, and then lay it flat again, and then that shows me the other quarter points will be right here. So I'm gonna mark those as well. Okay, so I've got quarter points of my cuff, now I need to find quarter points of my stocking piece. In this case, the side seams are actually quarter points. That doesn't happen in every pattern, um, but it is in this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my seams and put those together and find the, the middle points of those. So now using those markings and my seams, I have quarter points. So my seams are quarter points, and then these are quarter points. Now you're gonna take the cuff piece and find the seam of it, and you're gonna line the seam up with the back side of the stocking. So stick it inside, and line the seam of the cuff up with the seam of the shark body. And you're gonna pin those together or clip them together. And now you can go around and find the quarter points and match up all the quarter points and pin them together. And remember, my seams are quarter points on the stocking body. So now I've got my quarter points, and now we're ready to add the tab piece. Take the tab piece, and you're gonna fold it in half with the seam on the inside, so you're not gonna see the seam from the outside. And you're gonna take it to that seam on the back side of the stocking and the cuff. You're gonna take this marker off, and you're just gonna slip the tab piece between those two layers. And really, you can add the tab piece before you add the the cuff, um, so either way that doesn't really matter as long as you get the tab piece right on the back side where the dorsal fin is and you line up those seams. Okay, and like I mentioned earlier, faux fur is a little bit more slippery, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple more pins to this so that I can make sure that I'm sewing the right spots. Now I'm ready to sew the cuff piece and the tab piece to the stocking body. So I'm just gonna take it into my sewing machine and we're gonna sew it with a half an inch seam allowance. 
Okay, you're gonna try to keep this aligned as best you can. Um, faux fur, like I said, is gonna be a little bit more slippery, so um, just be careful with that if you're using faux fur like I am. So go ahead and start sewing. Make sure you do your back stitches. And when you get to the tab piece, you're gonna wanna probably use your hand wheel because this is a lot of fabric that's going through your machine and you wanna make sure you're nice to your machine. So I'm just gonna use my hand wheel to crank through it so that I don't break a needle or hurt my machine because this is just a lot of fabric. All right, and then once you're past the tab piece, you can go ahead and sew it like normal without using the hand wheel. Okay, once you reach the end, you're just gonna wanna make sure you backstitch again to secure your seam. And uh, a little pro tip here, if you're using faux fur like I am, keep a vacuum handy because faux fur sheds like crazy and this stuff gets everywhere and it makes such a big mess. So it's, it's good to keep your vacuum handy. I'll even vacuum the fabric pieces themselves and just kind of hold on to them so the vacuum doesn't suck them up, but it helps get rid of so much of the excess fur that sheds. Now that you've got those pieces sewn on, all you're gonna do is you're gonna pull the cuff out and then you flip it over, pull the tab piece up, and your stocking's done. It's ready to be hung up. So let's go see how it looks on the mantle. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'll catch you in the next video.